Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining my session today. I am really excited seeing that like many are interested. I don't know why the topic I want to talk about was among the interesting ones, but I think everyone is looking for this AI thing that they want to see what's happening. Uh, this is actually the first time I'm giving a talk in person during Dev Summit. Last one was virtual. Maybe some of you have seen, like, I watched it from previous sessions. So, can I move now? Yeah. I can, okay. Um, so what, what I'm gonna be talking about today is something maybe many of you have realized, like uh, many times we had like crashes, failures based on like wrong state estimations and especially like attitudes that, uh, okay, for, okay, in PX4 we have like Kalman filter taking care of it, TKF is taking care of it. But based on everything which was like being talked about also this morning, I realized that now this is a time so that we can add not an autonomy, but maybe some level of intelligence. I don't know if we can kind of like call it an intelligence. So uh, I have like proposed this which is like a flash talk today, so I'll just give you the idea, and then about the code and the stuff, I will talk about it later. Um, so my, for those of you who might not know me, uh, I'm Farhang, it's been like five years I had the pleasure to uh, be in PX4 community, and uh, they are really hard, like uh, warm and welcoming community. So I have done some couple of uh, mess ups with the code, Many of them not successful anyway. Many flights with crashes and uh, so, but I'm trying, struggling. So uh, I realized that I can match like the academic way that I'm working in, uh, which is like main focus of on like machine learning. So I try to bring it to PX4 environment. So this is our agenda today. You don't need to know about it much. So I will just jump into the next part. Uh, about the state estimation, uh, we have talked about many neural networks, like uh, generally, like it's been being talked like around the world, like in academia and many different places. And typically you have this typical image on the right side that there are always like a couple of like neural network layers uh, and then you're finally coming to a final decision. Um, I have chosen a simple way so that we can get the data like from the sensors on your flight controller and on top of EKF we can use this data to have your state estimation corrections. Already data coming from the sensors, they're noisy. EKF is coming on top of that. So what I am planning to do that I have already like implemented to some extent is that to add a simple neural network on top of it, a train network, which can report these uh, still noisy data coming from EKF itself to be like more smooth out of it. So then this could be like benefited from the flight controller side itself and we can have like more a smooth attitude estimations. These are some math, uh, it is too much. But normally, uh, we want to train a network to say that we want to converge these all state estimations. So basically, I have to rely on one ground truth. And uh, at the same time, I have to rely on the real data that I'm taking. So my ground truth basic, basically like for those who are in robotics, they definitely are familiar with these equations. Uh, from vehicle dynamics, I can have a theoretical dynamic model, and from those, I can actually produce angular velocities and linear velocities, and matching these data, like roll rates, pitch rates, yaw rates, any kind of rates that you can imagine, in theories, I can feed this data to my training network, and I can benefit from it within these steps such that the state estimations are coming like from my Kalman filter already, dynamic model state estimation. Then I merge these together, I bring up a new network trained 
or a new inference, I, would pre I can introduce a new model for that. And then we can have like less noisy state estimations. This is like kind of really general. I've tried to do this with PX4. So maybe we can expand it later on to other points. On the right side, it is something really simple. Actually, I got this from ChatGPT. I didn't write it, OK? Uh, so you can have like some specific layers. Uh, this is in Python written. Uh, so you can have it like any other like kind of uh, language you want to have. So I just wanted to transfer the, the idea that you can just train these two kind of data coming, which are like single dimensional data on each point. And they are not image, they are just uh, like, let's say, uh, single values coming in. And then uh, you can have your train network benefiting from uh, let's say, your, your model trained for that specific environment. Unfortunately, I couldn't find such model, like uh, when I searched, there was no such open model, so I had to train it myself. And it was mostly on simulation data and not much of a flight tests. So uh, later I'm planning to extend this model such that it is like more aware about the whole situations. Um, okay. I don't know if I have drawn everything correct here. Uh, this is one part which is like, uh, which can benefit from it. So usually since your inferences are being implemented on your companion computer, you have to have a way to communicate with your flight controller anyway. So I came to the point that why not we use micro XRC DDS and uh, why not we propose like a framework so that uh, we can get this data, we already have sensor combined. Benjamino, you are there. Sensor combined we have now? Okay, so if we can have like publisher subscriber system, uh, at the same time taking this data, assumably in high rate, which like more than 100 hertz, we can have fast decisions and, they can, and we can report back to the flight controller itself to correct the attitude estimation. Um, the one bottom side, I also had question mark. I don't know what module to put there. So later I will figure it out. No problem. Um, let's merge this to current uh, current situation that we have. Uh, Siri is listening to me. Uh, let's merge this to current situation and current available hardware that we have. Um, I think, Alex, you have one with Orin and flight controller, okay. And I also have Holy Bros upcoming hardware here. So you can benefit from like such hardware to have like a high power computer. And uh, Holy Bros has not released this yet, so uh, it will be. Uh, it's coming. Uh, then you can benefit from this. You can run your inferences in near, uh, like near real time. Uh, or you can have like, for this use case, you can have a simpler case, which is like uh, the one you might have seen, this one with Raspberry Pi, you can have it. And uh, since this is single dimensional, you can implement it. And then you can just pass this data like between nodes and your flight controller. And then you can have uh, attitude estimation correction. Since you're all bored, I will jump to my choice. I have done my implementation on this device that I have now. Pixel 6X, like with CM4 carrier board, already has this capability that you can do your implementation on it. And then, forget that, come to this. Uh, this is the actual thing we are talking about. So. Data coming from the sensor is already a mess. We know that. Um, you can see that the one coming from Kalman filter, which we are seeing in our logs normally, the, like, the diagrams are looking like that, that we are seeing. So what I have added on top of it, after implementing the neural network model, you can see that how data is smoothened enough to be near, like as close as possible to real time, like what you are actually seeing. Because we already have the idea of dynamic model of the vehicle in theory, and at the same time, we are not dropping the consideration of uh, practice for that. 
So uh, this is the like final point of it that you can see I, I can have like with a bit of delay, I can still have like kind of better attitude estimations. And this can lead to your like many, uh, how can I say, many fail safe areas as well. So on top of this and on based on any anomaly reported from your sensors, you definitely can have like some specific reports that my vehicle is going to be failing or I'm going to be crashing on this flight. So uh, it is like, how can I say? It's like performance optimization on top of the current hardware that like, uh, like solely flight controllers are using and getting benefits from. Uh, I, I didn't find like much like, uh, how can I say, I didn't find much of a, uh, I don't know if such thing is being implemented like outside, like in practice, any companies who are working on that. But I have a plan to have this open sourced soon and push to PX4. And uh, I will, for sure I will document it on, on current available hardware, uh, if I can like have the hardware in my hand. And we will try to have it like for powerful uh, co like companion computers like Jetson, uh, specifically Orin has to be there. The rest are kind of obsolete for this case. Uh, and uh, yeah, probably like soon I could be like releasing it like back to PX4 upstream. And uh, it's a little bit of change on you. I think XRC gonna be needed. So yeah, that is that is pretty much all. I know it looked a bit confusing, maybe. Uh, and thanks for Holy Bro for sponsoring this session, by the way. Uh, if you have any questions, you may ask. Faces look like lost, but it is. At least I hope I can help. These are useful links, by the way, if you want to go for and check for them. Uh, anything specific is your consideration you might be asking. Thank you. We are good? Yes. Um, what's the latency of going back and forth? Uh, it's in milliseconds. I know it's not acceptable. I know that. I know. IMU rate is 400 hertz. I know that. That is, yeah. But, but it's a matter of trade-off. I'm, I'm risking this actually because this is like at academic level now. So bringing it to practical side, I don't know how feasible it's going to be, but results are fine so far. Yes, he was in the queue, sorry. On the uh, also you were sharing where you had the output of your algorithm and ETF, where were you deriving the real value from? For training, I'm trying to make it like open to anything, like any network you want to use. Okay. I'm trying to make it like a do so you can play with it. So if you have like grasped the like whole subject, I'm trying to just give the idea. Okay. Then I will try to say that, okay, you can use like any kind of neural network training you want to do. That is on you. But it is something really simple because all data is single dimensional. And this has been implemented, I don't know, back then somewhere when I was not even born maybe. Uh, but now since AI is hyped, so everyone just got the chance to know what AI is. Uh, that's why I'm trying to do that. So when I document it, I will try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, and yeah, not a big deal. Or maybe uh, there's also a chance that I will like uh, introduce like edge level, like edge device level for that as well, because that one can also take care of it to some extent. Yes? Uh, I'm curious what you used to do training. I've done similar to like recreating an LQR with a fuzzy neural um, network. Were you using MATLAB or what were you using to train the Different platforms I have tested. Like MATLAB, yes, I have used MATLAB as well. Like simple neural network trainings, like many, like more than 10 different ways I have tested for this. So. Uh, because the data is something simple, it is not. Yeah, but but it is high rate. Like I know, that one is the issue. Uh, but convergence is not a big deal for this data. 
it is like it's not like object detection that will have like hassle of like coming to any. That's why I'm saying I'm trying to generalize it to say that just give the idea and then you just have the weights in each iteration as you are inferencing. So you could be more near to real time as much as possible. Yeah. Are we good? Thank you very much.